Good morning, everyone. Okay, so it's 10 o'clock now. So let's start our webinar. Okay, good morning. Welcome, everyone. I am Li Xiang from Utah. Welcome to today's webinar, How to Make Your Own Cheese. If you have any question, you may leave your question at the chat box. We are streaming this webinar live on KLESF Facebook too. Please help us to share and like this video. Okay, now I would like to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Ong Kya Chu. Dr. Ong Kya Chu is currently a senior lecturer in the Department of Science and Engineering, Center for Foundation Studies, Sungai Long Campus, University Tunku Abdul Rahman, Utah. Okay, now without further ado, we will turn the time over to Dr. Ong. Okay, hi, Dr. Ong. Hello, morning. Hi, morning. morning. Okay, now I will pass the session to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hello, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Dr. Ong, and today we will learn how to make your own cheese. Okay, uh, without further ado, let me share my screen first. Okay, so morning to everyone. And today we will be learning on how to make your own cheese. Is it possible to make your own cheese at home? The answer is yes. You can make your own cheese by using a few simple uh, ingredients at your home. So the, there are two objectives for today's webinar. First is to discover whether you are able to produce your own cheese at home. And secondly, you'll be learning the basic principle of cheese making. So through this webinar, uh, we are going to have uh, these two types of uh, objectives. Okay, uh, before we go further, let's uh, talk about the history of cheese. And the making of cheese uh, dates back more than 4,000 years ago. Okay, according to an ancient legend, it was, uh, cheese was accidentally made by an Arabian merchant. Okay, one day he was uh, on his journey across the desert. Okay, he, he wants to, he wanted to uh, go to somewhere. So he actually, he keep his milk inside a pouch that is made up of an uh, animal stomach. Okay, so when he uh, had his journey across the, the, uh, the desert, so he actually found that the milk uh, that he put inside the, uh, the pouch actually turned into whey and curd. Okay, this is because uh, the pouch uh, contained the enzyme granin. Okay, it is made up of uh, animal stomach, so it consists of the, the enzymes renin. And this renin act together with the hot temperature, the heat from the sun. So the milk actually turned into whey and curd. And this uh, person, he actually noticed that uh, the whey, the liquid form of the, uh, of the milk will actually uh, satisfy his thirst and the curd that produced actually satisfy his hunger. So that's how uh, the cheese was born during that time. Okay, um, cheese actually is a curd of milk solid and you can actually use uh, cow, goat or sheep's milk to produce the cheese. And the main ingredients to produce the cheese are milk, acid. Okay, uh, you can get the acid from lemon juice or from vinegar, or you can actually use bacterial cultures to produce your cheese. And normally raw or unpasteurized uh, milk is better because it will give you better flavor. And the milk must be free from antibiotics because uh, these antibiotics will actually uh, interfere the fermentation process that occur. Okay, that is uh, the basic uh, introduction about cheese. And there are two types of cheese. Normally, uh, we will actually divide it into two types of cheese. So the first type is known as young cheese or fresh cheese. 
Okay, this young cheese or fresh cheese, actually, uh, it requires shorter preparation of time and it can be consumed right after the whey is drained. Okay, I will show you later on what is, uh, what is uh, we, know, we call this as whey. Okay, I'll show you later on. And there are a few types of uh, young cheese or fresh cheese. For example, cream cheese, mascarpone, uh, mozzarella, and also ricotta. And whereas for aged cheese, uh, during the process of aged cheese, there are some additional bacteria or the mold that put inside the cheese. Okay, so it requires longer preparation of time and it requires aging process. So the cheese has to be kept for months before it can be consumed. Okay, uh, the example of aged cheese are chili cheese, blue cheese, and etc. Okay, so basically it can be divided into two types. Um, and today we are going to prepare young cheese, okay, because of the time constraint. So we are going to produce only young cheese or fresh cheese. Okay, um, since we are talking about cheese, so let's uh, discuss a little bit about what are the benefits of uh, having cheese. Okay, uh, basically, cheese is a kind of a nutrient dense food because it contains a lot of uh, protein, calcium, vitamins, and etc. So um, it contains a lot of nutrition that uh, nutrition that is good for our health. And research also show that uh, cheese, uh, by eating cheese, it actually can prevent dental caries and it can promote weight reduction uh, because uh, the protein uh, found inside the milk or the cheese can actually uh, make you feel full for a longer period of time. That's why it able to promote a weight reduction. Okay, uh, research also found that uh, this cheese actually has anti-hypertensive properties. This is because of some of the amino acids, the protein that found inside the cheese can actually uh, helps to reduce the blood pressure. And research also showed that uh, this, uh, by eating cheese, it can promote uh, the bone health and cheese also has uh, anti-carcinogenic effects. Okay, so it has a few types of uh, benefits when you are eating cheese. Okay, after we learn about the benefits of cheese, let's talk about what are the risks of having cheese. Okay, uh, some of the people, um, they are sensitive or allergic to casein, so they are not able to consume cheese. Okay, and some type of, certain type of cheese contain high amount of saturated fat. So it will, if you consume too much of high saturated fat, it will actually uh, contribute to cardiovascular disease. Okay, um, for those people who suffer from lactose intolerance, uh, they are not able to digest uh, uh, the lactose that found inside the milk. They will actually get stomach discomfort if they consume cheese. Okay, uh, this, uh, the person who suffer from lactose intolerance will only uh, uh, suffer from um, stomach discomfort if they are eating the cheese uh, that without that didn't undergo fermentation. Okay, but for those people who already, uh, those cheese that prepare through fermentation process, it is safe for those people uh, that suffer from lactose intolerance to consume it because uh, the lactose that found inside the meat already broken down by the bacteria. Okay, so you have to take note on the types of the cheese that produce. Okay, and besides that, uh, cheese is a kind of a calorie dense food. So the calorie value is quite high in cheese, so you will actually indirectly cause a uh, weight gain okay, for some people. And also, so, uh, this cheese, some of the cheese contain high amount of sodium. Okay, if you consume too much of sodium, it will actually indirectly raise your blood pressure. So these are the risks if you uh, have too much of cheese. Okay, uh, some of you maybe you have seen uh, this kind of picture before, whereby certain types of cheese, there are a lot of holes that can be found on the surface of the cheese. Okay, these holes or cheese, uh, they are known as eyes. Okay, why uh, some of the cheese have holes? This is because uh, additional bacteria are added uh, into this cheese. So the bacteria will actually, uh, they are actually more metabolized the lactic acid and release the carbon dioxide. So this carbon dioxide is a kind of gas and it causes bubbles form within the cheese. 
that's why um, you can see a lot of holes that can be found uh, inside the cheese. And normally you can only get uh, the cheese with holes uh, in those kind of uh, aged cheese. Okay, that I mentioned earlier on, it requires ripening time aging. So uh, normally aged cheese will have uh, holes. Okay, for, let's go for the steps uh, of making cheese. Okay, this uh, is the general steps of making cheese. So for step one, you need to warm the milk by using low flame or low medium flame. And second step, you, can acid, uh, you have to acidify the milk. There are two ways to acidify the milk. First, you can use acid um, through acidification process. Okay, you can either use uh, lemon juice or vinegar uh, to acidify the milk. Okay, if you don't want to use uh, acid, don't worry, you can still use living bacteria. Okay, this living bacteria will uh, undergo a fermentation process and through fermentation process, it will produce the lactic acid. So this lactic acid will help to acidify uh, the milk. And of course, if you compare um, acidifying the milk with acid and also the bacteria, of course, uh, living bacteria will uh, take longer time, okay? Because uh, the fermentation process, uh, is uh, it takes hours. So you need uh, to spend more time on that. Okay, for step three, you need to add coagulant or what we call as rennet. And for step four, you have to drain the curds to remove away the extra whey. And for step five, you have to add salt, okay, to enhance the flavor of your cheese. And for step, step six is uh, age the cheese. Okay, uh, step six is not necessarily, uh, it is not applicable for, uh, young cheese okay so young cheese uh, you can actually skip step six okay if you want to produce young cheese but if you want to produce aged cheese you can you have to proceed with uh, step number six okay uh just now i did mention that uh, in order for you to acidify the milk you can either use acid or living bacteria Okay, if you are using living bacteria, the bacteria will undergo a process which is known as fermentation. Okay, normally in the, uh, in the process of cheese making, uh, we actually choose either mesophilic culture or starters or thermophilic culture or starters. Okay, for mesophilic cultures or starters, right, it consists of strain of lactococcus lactis and its subspecies. Okay, whereas for thermophilic culture, uh, it contains the, it comprises of lactobacillus helveticus, helveticus and, also, and others uh, subspecies. And for thermophilic culture or starters, it requires higher incubation time, uh, higher incubation temperature, I'm so sorry. Okay, um, yeah, this is how it looks like. Actually, I, I found this uh, picture on uh, Google Shopee. So you can actually purchase this kind of uh, culture uh, through some website and the price is, uh, is uh, not very, uh, very cheap. Okay, uh, the price is quite high. Okay, you can actually choose uh, this kind of uh, cultures to make your own cheese. Okay. Just now we did mention that uh, by using living bacteria, the bacteria will undergo fermentation and we will produce lactic acid. Okay, now let's talk about how does lactic acid form. Okay, let's look at this picture. As you can see, this one, uh, this is a living, uh, this diagram is showing a living bacteria. And on the surface of this living bacteria, there is one kind of enzyme, which is known as galactoside permease. And this galactoside permeates will actually make the membrane of the bacteria become permeable to lactose. Okay, lactose is a kind of sugar that found inside the milk. So uh, with the presence of this enzyme, the lactose can go inside or they are permeable to this bacteria. So this lactose can go inside the bacteria. Okay, what happened is after this lactose go inside the bacteria, Okay, there's one enzyme which is known as beta-galactosidase. It's a kind of enzyme. It will help to break down lactose 
into glucose and galactose. Okay, so you can see the lactose is being broken down okay, by this uh, enzymes into glucose and galactose. Okay, so now uh, with the presence of glucose, the bacteria, it can get energy from this glucose without the presence of oxygen or what we call as anaerobic respiration or fermentation. Okay, so now through this fermentation process, the glucose is converted into lactic acid. Okay, so now this lactic acid, uh, it is able to acidify uh, the milk. Okay, so uh, just now I did mention that during step six, we have to add coagulant or what we call as rendered. Actually, uh, this rendered, uh, uh, the, ad the addition of rendered is not compulsory. Okay, um, in our workshop today, we are not uh, using rennet. Okay, uh, the purpose of having uh, rennet, right, is to uh, actually encourage even more thickening or solidifying of the cheese. Okay, and the amount of rennet is needed uh, depends on the type or the texture of the cheese that you want to produce. If you are producing a cheese uh, with softer texture, so you use lesser uh, Rennet. If you want to produce harder cheese, so you use a uh, more rennet. Okay. Uh, traditionally, this uh, rennet it is uh, found in animal stomach. Okay, that I mentioned earlier at the very beginning. Uh, uh, on the history of the cheese. So when the Arabian uh, merchant he placed his uh, milk inside the animal pouch, the the pouch that made from the animal stomach. So uh, the rennet inside. Uh, the stomach will actually uh, helps to break down uh, the milk. Okay, so traditionally, rennet is uh, obtained from animal stomach. Okay, nowadays, uh, due to the improvement in science technology, we have uh, bacterial rennet. Okay, so it is uh, obtained from recombinant DNA. And there's another type of uh, rennet, which is called as microbial rennet, and it is uh, obtained from the fungus. Okay, as for those uh, vegetarian, don't worry. Uh, you can still purchase uh, or you can get plant coagulant. And this kind, uh, this, uh, kind of coagulants are uh, actually obtained from the fig tree or from the milk tester. Okay, so this is how uh, the rennet look like. Okay, if you Google, you go to Shopee, you go to Lazada, you can see, okay, there are different types of uh, rennet. Okay, some of them, they are in flavored form. Some of them are in liquid form and some of them they are in powder form okay so there are different types of uh, rennet okay in different forms so you can choose uh, the form that you prefer okay so you already learned about acidification of a uh, cheese uh, why do you need to add coagulant okay let's look at how does the cheese form okay before we we see, we uh, go deep into the more detail about how the cheese are being formed. Let's look at the composition of the cheese. Okay, so basically, uh, cheese is made up, of, uh, sorry, milk is made up of protein, okay, lactose, fat, calcium, vitamins, and other minerals as well. Okay, so these are the compositions that make up the milk. And what happened is, uh, just now I did mention that uh, during cheese making, it is very important for you to acidify uh, the milk. So later on, it will turn the milk will turn into your cheese. Okay, what happens is when you have acid present in the milk, this acid will actually reduce the pH of the milk. Okay, when the milk becomes acidic condition, so the milk will form curd. Okay, why does this happen? Okay, so now we have to zoom into uh, protein. Okay, just now I did mention that uh, milk actually made out of uh, the one of the components that found inside the milk is actually the protein. Okay, what is actually protein? And protein is a, a huge molecule or what we call as macromolecule. Okay, you just imagine this uh, picture, it is showing a type of protein. Okay, it is a big molecule. And this uh, protein, macromolecule, it is made up of a lot of amino acids. Okay, you just imagine each of this individual, it represents one amino acids. So basically, 
protein, it is made out of a lot of amino acids. Okay, you can you, you can see from this picture, okay, one amino acid is joining together with another, with another, with another, with another amino acids. So um, protein, it is a, a macromolecule that made up of a lot of amino acids. So there are different types of protein. Okay, let's look at amino acids. Okay, this is the uh, basic chemical structure of um, amino acids. So as you can see here, uh, there's one uh, NH2 uh, group or amino group that are linked to the carbon. And there's another uh, COOH group and also another hydrogen atom. Okay, so let's look at this R group. Okay, um, there are 20 types of amino acids and they are, uh, they, hence there are 20 types of R group. Okay, there are 20 types of R group. So as you can see over here, uh, there are 20 types of amino acids with different R group. Some of the R group is uh, polar. That means they can dissolve in water. Some of the R group is, uh, they are non-polar. That means they cannot dissolve in water. Some of the R group uh, is, uh, are negatively charged, while some of them are positively charged. So there are different types of R group with different kind of uh, properties. Okay. Um, for those who, are, who don't have a biochemistry uh, background, don't worry. You don't know how, uh, you, you have no idea about all these uh, structures. Don't worry. I try to simplify to all of you. You just imagine uh, there are 20 types of Lego block. Okay, I'm sure that all of you are quite familiar. You are quite familiar with uh, Lego blocks. Okay, you can see uh, these Lego blocks, right? They are different uh, size different color. So you just imagine there are 20 types of that uh, Lego block. Okay, so each of this Lego block, it will represent one type of amino acids. Okay, you just imagine like that. Okay, so when you have different types of amino acids that join together, uh, that arrange together, you will have different types of shape. Okay, and there are different types of bonding, chemical bonding and chemical interactions that found inside the protein. Okay, um, so it's the same thing uh, that you are when you are playing around with your Lego block. So when you use different, uh, when you take different types of amino acids, you assemble them together, you join them together, uh, the shape will be different. So in this world, all the type, uh, all the proteins, right, they have different shape, different structure. Okay, because of different combination of amino acids. So uh, you just imagine all the proteins, uh, they have different shape due to different types of interaction and different types of chemical bonds. Okay, so what happened is when you have acid that found inside the lemon juice or in the vinegar or in the lactic acid, so this acid will actually lower the pH of the milk. And this pH, uh, when the pH of the milk uh, is changing, so it will actually disrupt or affect the chemical bonds that are the interactions that found inside the protein. So as a result, the shape or the structure of the protein will change. And finally, you are able to get your cheese. Okay, or you can see uh, the curds uh, form during, uh, after you add in uh, the lemon juice or the acid. Okay, so this is another picture that shows you uh, the action of acid from protein. Okay, so this is a protein, as you can see over here protein, one protein, one protein molecule, one protein molecule. So uh, in between this protein molecules, right, there are a lot of interactions, okay? There are a lot of chemical interactions. So what happens is when you add uh, acid, this acid will actually uh, affect or destroy uh, the chemical bonds or the interactions that found inside the milk. So that's why you can see the shape uh, or the structure of the protein is changing, okay? Initially, uh, the milk, the protein that found inside the milk is this, in this condition, as you can see on the on the left hand side. But once you add in acid, the shape of the protein uh, is changing. So you will see uh, they will all the proteins they are actually clumped together to form uh, your curd. Okay, so this is what happened you when you add in uh, acid to the milk. Okay. Just now we did mention also uh, you during the process of cheese making, you are adding in rennet. Okay, 
how uh, why do we add in granite? Okay, actually this granite, right? Uh, it the it is a kind of enzyme and it involves uh, a few stages, uh, the mechanisms. Okay, when you add in a uh, granite, there are a few uh, chemical reactions that happen, but I would like to make it short and simplify to all of you so that all of you can uh, understand easily. Okay, so what happened is you just imagine a, this is a kind of protein. So when you add in granite, this granite will actually uh, break the bonds that found in the protein. Okay, when it breaks the bond, so uh, of this casein kappa. Okay, casein kappa is a kind of protein that found inside the milk. Okay, so what happened is when this granite, it hydrolyzed the chemical bond inside this casein kappa or what uh, or a kind of protein, uh, this casein kappa will actually turn to become para casein kappa. Okay, and this para casein kappa, right, it is hydrophobic. That means it cannot dissolve in water. Okay, so when you have a lot of uh, para casein kappa, right, uh, that clump together, so it will cause all the molecules or the protein uh, that found inside the milk to coagulate together. Okay, that's why we need to add in uh, the we need to add in granite to actually help or encourage even more uh, coagulation of the milk. Okay, so that it will turn into cheese. Okay, so uh, that's why we add in this granite. Okay, to make the molecule or the protein become hydrophobic, not soluble in water, so it will be. Uh, it will actually uh, clump together and form a curd. Okay, so let's, uh, after we discuss about the introduction and also the principle of uh, cheese making, now let's move on to uh, cheese. Okay, today we are going to prepare two types of cheese. Uh, both of them are actually fresh cheese or young cheese. Uh, you only need a very short time uh, to prepare this kind of cheese. And you can actually consume this cheese uh, right after you uh, produce it. Okay, so the cheese that we are going to produce today are cream cheese and also mascarpone. Okay, so these are the two types of cheese that we are going to produce today. Okay, let's talk about cream cheese. What is cream cheese? It is a kind of fresh cheese and it is made by using milk. And cream cheese, uh, it has shorter shelf life. You cannot keep it for a very long time. You have to consume it and finish it as soon as possible. And you have to put it in the fridge okay, after you produce it. Normally, cream cheese, uh, they, we actually use it uh, to spread on our bread. Uh, we use it for frosting of cake and also for some uh, non-baked cheesecake. So uh, we use cream cheese. Okay, so the second type of cheese uh, that uh, we are going to do today is actually Italian cream cheese or what we call as mascarpone. Okay, it is one of the creamiest or uh, we can say that it is richest cheese. Okay, because it contains high uh, percentage of butter fat, uh, it contains two times of fat as compared to uh, cream cheese. Okay, why uh, there are uh, high percentage of uh, fat. This is because the main ingredients that you use to make a uh, mascarpone is actually the heavy cream or cream. Okay. Uh, so normally we use mascarpone for cheesecake, for tiramisu, and uh, as, uh, as well as for some muffins. Okay. So that's a little bit introduction about cream cheese and also mascarpone. Okay, now let's move on to the materials that we need to uh, use while you are making cheese. Okay, uh, if you want to prepare cream cheese, you have to use milk. But if you want to prepare mascarpone, you can use uh, heavy cream or cream. So uh, it depends, okay, whether you want to uh, produce cream cheese or produce mascarpone. So you can either choose milk or heavy cream. Okay, the rest of the materials are the same because all the procedures to make these two types of cheese, uh, they are actually the same. Okay, so you need a lemon juice or vinegar. Um, for this uh, cheese making workshop, right, we are not using uh, living bacteria because of the fermentation process, it takes hours. So if you want to prepare your cheese in a very short time, you can actually choose a lemon juice or vinegar or you can, uh, you can use any types of vinegar. Okay, and also you need a cooking pot, 
you need a spoon, strainer, or cheesecloth, and some salt or herbs and spices such as cinnamon, ginger, garlic. Okay, so it's up to you. You can actually flavor your your cheese according to your taste. Okay, we already went through all the materials. Let's move on to the procedure. Okay, first of all, you have to measure 250 ml of milk if you want to prepare cream cheese and you have to pour uh, this milk into a cooking pot and you have to heat the milk by using low medium heat. Okay, and bring it to simmer. Okay, uh, please avoid uh, boiling uh, those milk. Okay, don't boil those milk, but you just bring it to simmer. Simmer, that means you can see uh, there are a lot of bubbles that starts to form uh, around the milk. Okay, while you are heating the milk, you have to constantly stir the milk to avoid scorching. Okay, when you can see uh, a lot of bubbles starts to form around all around the milk, you can add in two spoons of lemon juice or vinegar and you will see the milk starts to coagulate and thicken. Okay, uh, please bear in mind, in this uh, process, we are not adding in any rennet. Okay, you can, uh, because I, I, I skipped that part, it is okay also if you don't want to add rennet. Okay, because rennet is uh, add, added in to just to encourage even more thickening uh, or coagulation of the milk. Okay, it is okay to skip rennet for uh, the making of cheese at home. Okay, so uh, when you can see uh, the milk starts to coagulate and and chicken, you have to gently stir the milk again so that uh, the vinegar or the lemon juice actually homogenize uh, with the milk. Okay, and you have to turn off the flame after two to three minutes. Okay, after that, you have to drain the curd by using a strainer or a cheesecloth. Okay, after that, you have to gently press the curd to remove excessive weight. And then now you have your own cheese. Okay, so. I know it is very worthy for all of you to look at all this. Okay, I already make it into a picture form so that all of you can see it easily. Okay, so as usual, first of all, you have to measure your milk. After that, you pour into a cooking pot. And by using low flame or low medium flame, you heat up the milk. Okay, and you have to gently stir the milk while you are heating it. And you have to bring the milk to simmer. That means uh, you can see quite a number of uh, bubbles that form inside the milk. Okay, once you uh, see a lot of bubbles starts to form around the milk, you can add in uh, the vinegar, okay, or lemon juice. Okay, and now you can see uh, the picture that's shown in this, uh, at the middle of this uh, uh, slides, right? You can see uh, the milk actually form curd. Okay, it's like tau fu fa that you consume. Okay, so you can see uh, there are two things uh, that form after you add in uh, the vinegar or lemon juice. Okay, so you have to use a strainer to separate uh, the curd and also the whey. Okay, so this one, right, the one that left uh, inside your strainer uh, is actually known as curd or your cheese. Okay, the one, uh, the liquid that uh, you filter out is actually known as whey. Okay, W-H-E-I, whey. Okay, uh, you, you do not need to uh, discard this way, okay? Why? Because this way is quite nutritious. You actually, you can actually keep it and use for your cooking. If you want to uh, cook curry, you can actually still use uh, this way, or you can actually use it uh, as your mask. Okay, you can apply on your face uh, as a mask. Uh, of course, uh, the if you want to apply this way uh, as a mask uh, on your face, right? You have to reduce the amount of uh, vinegar that you use earlier on okay otherwise everything will become uh, very acidic okay and you have to gently use the spoon to press uh, the curd to remove excessive whey okay so to uh, make uh, the curd become slightly drier okay after that you can add a little bit of salt and you can add a little bit of uh, spices or herbs okay to enhance the flavor of the cheese Okay, and finally, your cheese is ready to be served. Okay, so uh, the step is quite simple and I would like to share with you uh, on a video on how to uh, produce your own cheese.
Okay, that is a short video about cheese making. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so that is the whole procedure on how you make your own cheese at home. And this is the procedure for you to prepare your cream cheese. Okay, if you wish to prepare mascarpone uh, or Italian cream cheese, you can actually replace the milk by using heavy cream. Okay, all the procedures, the steps are still the same. Uh, just that you replace the milk uh, by using heavy cream or cream. Okay, so you, you should be able to produce your uh, own mascarpone. Okay, so uh, let's go back to uh, some of the concept or why do we need to uh, heat the milk? Okay, first of all, there are three reasons. Because we, first of all, we need to destroy some of the all the organisms that found inside the milk. And secondly, uh, heating the milk, it will help to break down some milk protein. And thirdly, uh, heating the milk, it helps to denature the whey protein. Okay, so that's why we need to... Uh, uh, heat the milk. Okay, so some of you maybe you are curious uh, whether you will ask how long can you keep the cheese. Uh, normally, uh, you can actually keep it for five to seven days and of course you have to observe the color of the cheese. Okay, if the color of the cheese is uh, off from normal, it becomes slightly reddish or greenish in color. Okay, please do not consume those cheese anymore. Okay, uh, if the color of the cheese is normal, Okay, just like a, a yellowish, whitish yellowish color, right? So you can still consume it. And I will suggest you to look at the expiry date of the milk also. Okay, so to avoid uh, food contamination. Okay, so you have to take note of this. And yeah, some of you maybe you, you are curious whether you can actually replace uh, fresh milk by using milk powder. Uh, the answer is yes, you can use milk powder to produce uh, your own cheese. So what you need to do is you just need to take three quarters of powder milk and you add in a one and a half cup of cold water. Okay, and you stir the milk powder, the powder milk until it dissolves. So now you get your milk and you can proceed with the procedure that I show all of you just now. Okay, so you can actually replace uh, the fresh milk by using milk powder. And you can use different types of milk, uh, full cream milk, fresh milk, um, UHT milk. Okay, so you can use different types of milk. Okay, uh, some of you maybe you are curious whether you can produce uh, cheese from breast milk, uh, from soy milk, from almond milk. The answer is yes. The procedure is still the same that I showed uh, to all of you just now. You can produce uh, milk by using breast, uh, sorry, you can produce cheese by using breast milk, soy milk, and also almond milk. And of course, the taste uh, of the cheese will be slightly different, okay, not uh, the same uh, as uh, the normal cheese, okay, that made by using uh, cow's milk. Okay, so uh, lastly, I'll, I would like to uh, share, share with all of you that in order for you to have a healthy body, healthy bone, teeth, and uh, you are not gaining weight while you are, you are having cheese and you have to protect your heart, okay? Try to avoid uh, cardiovascular disease. So what you should do is, you, I will encourage you to choose lower fat cheeses and take cheese in moderation or small portion. Okay, so that is uh, my presentation for today. So the end, thank you. Okay, so uh, that is uh, how you make your own cheese. And I hope uh, you learned something today. I'm very happy to share with all of you on my experience on how to produce uh, cheese at your uh, home. Okay, uh, for this webinar, right, we actually, we are having a video competition. So it is open to all primary and secondary school and the participation uh, can, can be solo, in pair or a maximum three members in a team. Okay, so you can submit your video in MP4 version by uh, 18 of December, 12 p.m. And through the submission uh, link that I shown over here. And this is the QR code uh, for you to submit your, your uh, video. So let's look at uh, what are the rules and regulations for this video competition. Okay, first, uh, all the participants should uh, must 
or if you wish to submit your video, right, it must be a two to three minutes video to show their inno your innovative way in producing, uh, in introducing cheese, preparing your cheese and also presenting your homemade cheese. And all the participants must be the original creator of the entry documenting uh, of your video. And uh, while all the entries involving intellectual properties, uh, rights, disputes uh, shall be the responsibility of all the entrants themselves and have nothing to do with the organizer. And rules number four, while the copyright of the video and its content is retained uh, by the participants, the entering, entering the competitions automatically provide KLESF the right to display the video online and or in any public or private setting with, without restrictions. So the organizer reserves the right to verify the qualification and price eligible of each participant and the winners will be announced on 20th of December 2020. Okay, so these are the rules and regulations. So, uh, as for the video competitions, right, these are the assessment criteria. Okay, 20% will be given for originality, 30% for innovation, 30% for presentation, and 30% for video quality. Okay, that is about a video competition on how to make your own cheese. Okay, all the participants are welcome to uh, join this uh, video competition. Okay, so that's uh, all for my presentation for today. So is there any questions from, from the floor? Okay, thank you, Dr. Ong, for sharing this. So now, um, Dr. Ong, you may scroll the chat box. There are some questions for you. Okay, at this moment, no question from Facebook, but just um, our colleagues say hi to you. Okay. Hi. So you can have a look of the question. Um, the question start from Julie. Wait, uh, huh. Hi, please. Okay, the question from Julie is, if we use unpatronized milk to make cheese, matured ones, is there a risk in fermenting bad, bad bacteria in the cheese? There are some possibles also in fermenting some uh, Bad bacteria, yes. There is some grease. Okay, uh, that's why you need to, uh, if you are using unpasteurized milk, right, I would like to suggest you to keep the milk. Okay, that's why, as I mentioned earlier, in, as I mentioned uh, in one of my slides, uh, you can you, you need to heat up the milk so that it will actually help to uh, kill some, uh, not some, all the bacteria. Okay, we try to kill all the bacteria or all the microorganisms that are inside the milk. Uh, okay, yes. This next question is from Chan. Uh, okay, if you are using bacteria for fermentation, uh, can we still add in vinegar or lemon juice? Um, I, you can, uh, if you are using bacteria for fermentations, right, actually you don't need to add in vinegar or uh, lemon juice. Okay, because uh, bacteria through fermentation process, they already produce a lactic acid. So this lactic acid is, is good enough to acidify uh, the, the milk. Okay, so you don't need to add vinegar or lemon juice. Uh, spoons, uh, tablespoon. Okay, you can actually use tablespoon, okay, uh, while you want to scoop your lemon juice or your vinegar. Then this or oh, another, oh, another from there. Okay, uh, can we can we be added when preparing baby food? Um, I'm I'm not very sure that baby can consume whey or not because uh certain types of protein right it is quite difficult uh, for the babies or for the infants to digest. So I'm not there to uh, say that it is safe for the baby to consume uh, the whey. Need to wear mask. Uh, okay. Uh, if you ask me whether you need to wear mask uh, while you are doing your, um, uh, your cheese. Okay. Uh, for this cheese, right? Uh, uh, 
uh, actually, you not. It is not necessary for you to wear a mask while you are preparing this cheese because uh, we are not uh, dealing with uh, those bacteria because we are actually uh, curdling the milk by using uh, vinegar and or the lemon juice. Okay, we are not dealing with uh, bacteria. But if you want to uh, practice uh, better hygiene, uh, you can actually wear mask while you are you are preparing your cheese or avoid uh, talking or avoid having conversation with your friend while you are preparing cheese. Okay, because uh, when you are talking, right, as I mentioned earlier on in my yogurt making uh, webinar, right, uh, when you are talking, all your saliva, uh, they, it contain uh, some microorganisms, so maybe you will accidentally uh, culture the bacteria. Okay, these are the things that we, we can't really see. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you. Not from Julie to you. Okay, uh, I welcome all the participants to join our video competition. So yeah, you can prepare your own cheese and you can share uh, all the your videos with uh, Cal ESF. What is the price? The price will be KLSF limited edition merchandise. We will show the picture uh, later. Okay. okay, anyone do you still have any question? You may post at the um, chat box. If you are watching this live on Facebook, you can leave your question at the comment session. We will pass the question to Dr. Ong. Okay, so um, while waiting for question, I would uh, like to request that we have prepared the feedback form. I'm posting the link at the chat box, so we we'll appreciate if you could help us to fill up the form so we can improve. So far, no question from Facebook. Uh, if you have any question after this webinar, you can leave your question at the comment section of the live video. Dr. Ong will see it after this webinar. Okay, so, um, um, okay, we... Uh, we are waiting for question, uh, but before before that, I would like to uh, promote our next event first, then we will take a group photo screenshot, okay? So let me uh, brief you about the next event first. At 11.30 today, we have a workshop titled Composting Food Waste into Fertilizer for Home Gardening. Then at 1 o'clock, we have Virtual Source Better initiatives during pandemic a sharing session. Then 2.30 is webinar by students. Webinar on science communication and innovation. Title is low-cost sugarcane vegas ways to improve soil moisture retention in agriculture. And at 3.30 is webinar by student also. Is title um Psyllium has as a plant-based stabilizer to produce high fiber, low cinerisis yogurt. So we, we have um, four more events after this webinar. So hope you can join us again. You may join the Zoom using the same, li same link or you may watch, it, uh, watch us as Facebook Live. Our Facebook is KLESF, Kuala Lumpur Engineering Science Fair. Okay, I have pasted the our Facebook uh, page link at the Zoom also. Okay, hope to see you again. Okay, now let's check whether we still have any question. Okay, I guess no at the moment. So can we take the group photo now? Okay, I would like to request all the 
participants, please turn on your camera. Okay, we will take a few shots. Please uh, bear with us. One moment, uh, everyone. You turn on your camera. Oh, hi. Now I can see you all face. All the faces. Hi. Okay. Okay. We try to take a few shots. Okay. The first. first okay. Let's smile. Hold on. Uh, we are taking a few. A few more, a few more, a moment. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your cooperation. Okay. So, okay, if you still have any, any question, um, uh, not only about the webinar or about the competition, you can leave your comment at the Facebook live video comment session or email or WhatsApp to us. Then we will get back to you. Okay, so we, okay, we, I guess there's no more questions. So we will end the session here. Okay, thank you everyone for joining. Hope to see you again at um, 11.30. Yes, thanks for joining. I hope all of you uh, will join the competition and will make your own cheese. Yeah, be creative and maybe you are the winner. Okay. Okay, so we will end the session now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you, Dr. Ong. You're welcome. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.